This is code.org, and we are in my neighborhood.java. Check. Use an if statement and the is bucket method to take all of the paint from the paint bucket if the painter object is standing. All right, so I see code. I'm going to hit run. I want to know what's going on here. So if we're standing on this paint bucket, we need to take all the paint. Oh, and we do move. Okay, so if. And we've seen this before. Let's see. They do have a show me how here. Always use your resources, guys. Keep in mind a comment, these slashes, they're for us humans. The computer just ignores it when it runs code. So just the instructions again, but I'll throw my code underneath. All right. So look at their example, right? Show me how. Great. So if, and then I'll leave this blank for now, and I'll do the parentheses, and then the curly brace, or curly bracket, and hit enter. That way I don't forget any of the parts I need. Now, when they write condition here, they mean just that. We have to ask a question, right? The computer can only respond in binary and only zero and one, also known as true and false. Zero is false and one is true. So computers are really good with yes and no questions. So if statement and is on bucket, all right? So if I just throw is on bucket, and that even sounds like a question, right? Is on bucket. Is, are they on the bucket? And the computer, that also sounds like a yes or no question. Yes, you're either on the bucket. No, you're not. Now, this isn't going to work yet, right? Because this is on bucket. It's a method. It is part of the painter class. It drives me nuts that we can't see the painter class. But it exists. It's code somewhere. And it has logic, it has behaviors such as is on bucket. So to be able to use this though, we don't directly use painter, we create an object, my painter, which is why we can use my painter.move. So we have to tell it what we are asking about. So who is on the bucket? We want to know my painter dot is on bucket. And so this the computer sees and says, okay, if, all right, if my painter is on bucket, and then what do what? And again, my painter dot, and we know take paint. So, and we're going to need this twice because I see a two there. So what's going to occur here? As long as we are on the bucket, we will take paint. So only if this is true, will we do these things. If this is false, this will not happen, right? Only taking the paint if we are on a bucket. And I want to show you a bit. Right, so it works right there, obviously, right? We just took the paint. But I want to show you what happens. Let's say I take this move. I'm going to I'm going to add one more of these. I'm going to move twice. And then here, I'll move a third time. So if this statement runs, if we have, if this allows the code to run, I should move three times. Notice I only moved twice. Once. And twice. And that is because we weren't on the bucket, right? The computer is never going to run this if statement because the condition is false. It says right there, it says, are you on the bucket? False. So we only move twice instead of five times, right? This will only happen if we're on the bucket when the code runs. So what if I threw this stuff down here? I'd have to get rid of this. And I'm just proving my point here, guys. We need to understand conditionals. So now it's true. I ask it if it's on the bucket. When we ask that, we are. So we take the paint and move three. All right. So if statements only run, the stuff inside of these curly brackets only run, you can think of it as a block of code, if that thing's true. So this is what they actually want. Beautiful. Cool. We can do so much with conditional statements with if statements. And I'm excited to see what we get to do with them. So all is well. Onward.